Welcome to Melt University. This series will help you build your brand, inform you on a variety of career paths, and introduce you to top executives in sports and marketing. Now, here's your host, the president and CEO of Melt, one of the largest independent sports and event marketing agencies in the country, Vince Thompson. Welcome back, students. Virtual Melt University, we are rolling into the fall. Um, By the time you're listening to this, in the next week or two, we've got some great SEC games under the belt. We had some thrilling finishes this weekend. We know we've got more coming. And uh, this next lady, executive that we're going to interview, is very instrumental in having a major presence within the SEC and other other places. I'm a big fan of hers, big fan of her uh, organization. Michelle Elrod is the executive vice president and head of marketing for Regions Bank. And uh, you've probably seen all the great famous commercials and the big green bike and all of those great things. And she's in charge of, uh, you know, one of my favorite banks, lots of dear friends there. Um, you know, Regions is a, a, a monster over 100, 127 billion uh, in assets. A member of the S&P 500 index, uh, their leader in Southeast, leader in Birmingham. She's a great community leader and uh, gives a lot back. So, Michelle, we are so honored that you are joining Virtual Melt University to share your wisdom with our students today. Thank you, Vince. I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, as I have shared with you in the past, I am a huge believer in mentoring young people and have really spent a lot of time. My alma mater is the University of Alabama, and I have spent a lot of time at the University of Alabama, whether it's through the School of Business or the School of Communication and Information Sciences mentoring students, figuring out how to help them, inviting them to regions to see what it means to be a marketer. So I appreciate the opportunity. This is great. Thank you. Well, we, you know, I, like I said, I know I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. And, and, and one of your passions is to, is to give back to students. We've all been very blessed with, you know, great jobs, great careers, great organizations, and, and giving back to the, to the, to the next generation of, uh, of students and education and, and marketers. But, before we sort of dive into a lot of that, we, we, we like to take it all the way back. And I was glad I asked you where you grew up. I did not know your father was a pilot, a military pilot. And, and, and uh, throughout the, the journeys and the career stops, you wind up in Enterprise, Alabama, and you wind up at the University of Alabama. But we like to talk originally about you had great success in your career. Where, where, where was the original passion uh, ignited? Did you, you know, we, we hear a lot of great stories where, you know, somebody will say, well, I went to college to be a, a doctor and I wound up as a brand manager and those types of things. But for you, where did this passion and path uh, begin? Because you had seen the world basically by the time you'd gotten to the University of Alabama. Uh, and, and, and so you, you, know, you probably had a fully informed view of a lot of things that for your age. So where did this all start? Well, first, I want to thank you for using the word passion, because I don't think it's used often enough in the world of business. And I, I also believe that it is important to have a passion for what you do in business. You spend a lot of time at work, and if you bring passion to that, you're going to be much more successful. And that's exactly what happened. So I actually started at junior college. Um, Mm -hmm. I had started school early because I started school in Okinawa. So when I finished high school, my father was, he wanted me to stay another year or two at home. So I went to a junior college. So uh, so I'm not familiar with Enterprise. Where'd you go? Yeah, Enterprise State Junior College. Oh, yeah. It's a good junior oh, yeah. college. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the state so, of Alabama has had these great colleges for many, many years just because of, mm-hmm. you know, the, the governors and all that. And uh, and uh, and that's kind of sweet. He wanted you to stay, stay a little close as well. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I was young, so I did. And I, t- I was in journalism, and that's what I really thought my interest was because I like to write. However, I took one advertising course and it changed my life. And that Uh is where I truly had passion. I found out that I 
loved understanding consumer behavior. I liked understanding why people did what they did, the psychology of it, and how uh -huh. to communicate to influence that. And that, that was the beginning of everything. I changed my major. I focused really on psychology in advertising and marketing from there on out. So one class. One class. Because, because I, you know, I, I, I went to Auburn to be a sports writer. And my first, I wanted to go back to Mobile, Mobile Press Register. My first, but my first guest lecturer was David Housel, the SID head. And I said, man, I want to be there and wound up volunteering and spent four years. And it just sort of, sort of crystallized, you know, that, that put to your point, passion. And I totally agree with you. Everything I tell these kids, I'm like, if you're able to do and pursue what you do, what you're passionate about, you'll never work a day in your life. It'll never be a job. But so when that sort of ignited or crystallized that passion, then what became the path? Because I'm always fascinated with successful executives path from that, because I always tell my students and we're all living it now, um, you know, who'd have thought six months ago, you and I would be having a podcasting on Zencasters. You're sitting at your home running your, you know, your business from day to day. Uh, we're all in this tumble cycle together and we know that life is not going to be linear and the students are learning it now, but talk about sort of how this led to the path. Sure. So I uh, went to the University of Alabama after completing my two year degree and I went, I stayed and got my master's and I actually started work in a not for profit. So I started working with the United Way Agency, uh, the Mental Health Association of Tuscaloosa County. And I was passionate about improving the stigma associated with mental illness and teaching people about why mental health was important and how that affected everyone. So I did that for the United Way Agency and I went to work for Bryce Hospital, the largest state hospital at the time, and really enjoyed the public relations, the fundraising, the people development side of it. However, I missed the advertising and the consumer behavior. So I went to the head of retail with the First National Bank of Tuscaloosa. That was the largest bank in the uh, city at the time. There were other large name banks, but they did not have large market share. So I knew that the First National Bank of uh, Tuscaloosa could have a marketing director and I went to the head of retail and said when you're ready to hire a marketing director I want to be that person because this wow. is what I want to do and I, I thought that was a good fit for me because it was retail however it was banking and you really get to experience a lot in banking the commercial the wealth the consumer side and I felt it was uh, something that I could do well and you know Shortly, he decided he needed a head of marketing, and he called me, and the rest is history. Uh, well, and that has started uh, sort of, um, you know, an illustrious career. And so you evolved from that. And, and like I said, I, I, I applaud you. Uh, we talk about mental health a lot, and we've learned in, in talking to some of the athletic directors, Alan Green at Auburn, Ross B. York at, at Texas, Greg McGarity at, at University of Georgia, that mental health is a um, uh, emerging, fortunately or unfortunately, emerging career uh, in helping the mental health of student athletes. Uh, and, and that's a new career, career area. But so at what point did you go from Tuscaloosa uh, to Birmingham and, um, and, and, and join uh, at Regents? Because you've had a vaunted career there. And, and so what precipitated that move? Well, I was at First National, and it was purchased by AmSouth Bank. Mm -hmm. So First National had more than 50-some-odd percent market share, and AmSouth Bank had, I believe, 2 or 3 percent. And AmSouth was a large uh, southeastern bank, and it purchased First National. And uh, really worked on that merger, worked on the retail side and the marketing side, and was asked to come to Birmingham for a number of roles. But I, I wanted to pursue marketing, and I didn't really want to pursue the roles I was being offered. And I was then eventually offered a marketing job. So I moved to Birmingham in the early 90s, 90, 91, mm -hmm. and worked for AmSouth. And really, uh, I've held every job in the marketing department. And I think that's important because as the head of marketing, 
when I ask someone about something or to do something, I really do understand what I'm asking them to do and that it can be done. Well, you, you've South hit on and, a, I'm sorry, I'm but sorry, AmSouth and Regions merged, and now I'm with Regions. So. Well, and, you know, and a lot of people don't know this or maybe don't remember this, but, you know, Birmingham has been an amazing regional banking hub for many, many years. I lived in Birmingham for 15 years, and great banks, great leadership, great investment in the community. Um, but you've just hit on something, so you've hit on a couple of things that are sort of uh, my soapbox or my pet peeve. And uh, you have a lot of people working for you. You have a large staff. You have a lot of people, you know, uh, wanting to work for you and intern for you. And same with me. Uh, but one thing that I'm, 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 I'm seeing a little bit of a disturbing trend from this, this generation, I may sound like my parents now, but they... A lot of the students that I see or that I hire entry level, they're seeking instant gratification and, there's, and they, they do a lot of job hopping because they're, they're benchmarking and, and or they want to be the unicorn, they want to be CEO or Zuckerberg. And, 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 I, and, I, and I always I, I, I counsel them, I'm like, at least give it a year. You can't build any relationship, personal, professional, romantic, a job without really truly understanding. And then to your point, you were willing in your climb to take on anything to learn everything there was and be the best you could be at that job at that moment, which has led you to being the, the, the top. But had you decided to go work for eight or nine banks or other organizations in Birmingham or something like that, you never would have had that opportunity. And talk, share with these students the, the, the philosophy and the importance of sort of a little bit of the grind right now, because these entry-level jobs are going to be a lot harder to come by because more people are unemployed in marketing services, may be willing to take a lesser job for a lesser lesser salary right now, further squeezing the, the entry level. So I just want them to hear it from, you know, one of the masters about your point of view on this. Sure. And I, there are several things. So one is I always had a personal plan for my profession. So I would take 18 months to three years and I would say in the next 18 months to three years what do I want to learn what do I want to do and where do I want to be and it didn't mean that I had to be at a different company but it meant where did I want to be in my professional growth I also knew I wanted to be in marketing so even along the way when I had opportunities to do some other things I really tried to steer my career always into another marketing uh, job. So that was important to me. And I would say also that there is no such thing as instant gratification in business. That anything that sounds like that, it just, it's not going to last. It's not going to be real. And that really the whole point of developing yourself and developing your professional being is learning and learning how to influence mm -hmm. everybody it's interesting you talk about gratification i get a lot from young folks and and and, and others who say i just want to be a manager and i tell them constantly influencing is much more difficult than managing so throughout your career learn to influence mm -hmm. and think about it that way and learn what are the most important things I want to stand for and I want to be known for. Is it that I'm a great influencer? Is it that I am humble? Is it that I always come with a solution and not a problem? Is it that I can see multiple points of view? You know, what is it that makes a good worker? And look around yourself and find those things. I wrote an article, and it is on LinkedIn, about... Um, about what I have learned over, at that point it was 35 years, now it's more, but what I had learned, and there are several things listed in that, and I think that's important, that you not only learn your trade, and you not only perfect your skills, but you perfect your professional being, and decide what do I want to be known for. So for me, I wanted always to be responsive and I wanted people to always say they could depend on me and rely on me to do the right thing and get the job done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that I'm sorry, go ahead. No. So I've say th those are some things I think are very important. And to your point, 
that doesn't happen necessarily if switching companies over and over and over again. I'm not saying that's wrong, but for me, I looked within my company and I said every 18 months, am I still growing? Am I being given more opportunity? Am I getting a bigger sphere of influence? And as long as the answer was yes, why did I need to change? Right, right. Because sometimes just changing for change's sake really doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. And, 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 and but, 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 you know, like I said, I, 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 it pains me sometimes to see, you know, some of my, and, and by the way, they get great opportunities. And if you could, if you have a chance for professional advancement, by all means, take it. But I'm like, there's so much, there's so much opportunity. And there's so many great things going on. This is the most sophisticated, you know, uh, uh, generation of consumer. And, 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 and I know that I want to, I want to shift gears a little bit because I know, um, that so many of our students in the SEC have, you know, seen the green bike on campus. They've seen these great commercials. Um, what initially made Regents to make a commitment and decision to uh, and make a serious investment in uh, the, the, the sponsorship and marketing of the SEC? Because, you know, you guys, you do it as, as, as well as anybody. Uh, and, and talk about sort of, that informed strategy. And then I want you to segue into, you know, programs that you do, you do put out there for students and the and, and young graduates and hopefully the student athletes when, you know, they go to NIL. Sure. So most importantly, the SEC is aligned with our footprint and is aligned with our mm -hmm. consumers, both business and retail. So it's a very important venue for us. And when people have an affinity for something like the SEC, and they do, and you're involved in that, and you can show linkage, it helps both brands. And so I think that is one reason the SEC is so important to regions. Now, I will say this. We measure everything we do, and that includes our sponsorships. So we look at those sponsorships. We negotiate hard. We make sure that we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it and who we're reaching. And we measure that. We measure the eyeballs. We measure the response. We truly do stay on top of that for everything. We look at how many people attend uh, all of the SEC days that we attend and our big bikes uh, meet a uh, meeting. So, I think that's an important thing to remember is that what people see is the sponsorship and the activity, but know there's purpose and rhyme and reason behind everything. And that is about our consumer and that we do measure that. So I think that's important. In terms of student athletes, we have had a commitment to students for quite a while and have been part of delivering educational products on campuses. Some of those are financial, some of those are other help type of educational things for students. Our most important thing was helping students stay in school. One of the number one reasons kids uh, drop out of school, one of them is finances. And so we want to make sure that we give students what they need to be able to be financially savvy, or at least as financially savvy as they should be at that point in their life. Mm -hmm. We also started looking at athletes because when they started getting that stipend, we thought, this is a change. And what are they going to do with that stipend? And this is new. And how do we help teach them and guide them? not only for their future when they're super successful, but right now with that stipend. So we go on campus and we offer student athlete programs. We have a financial coach and we bring them on. We um, have been very successful with that. Because of COVID, we pivoted quickly. We couldn't go on campuses, so we do everything virtually now. And we have been able to work with the athletic departments and continue that program and work with colleges and continue our programs from a virtual standpoint. So we're proud of what we've been able to do to do with students on that, that front also. And of course, the SEC sponsorship helps us in that area. Well, you know, I, obviously I'm a biggest believer in college sports and college athletics because the passion, the emotion, you know, the multi-generational appeal, you know, you went to Alabama, your family love Alabama, your future generations. I went to Auburn. 
although my son um, uh, goes to, to, to Georgia, uh, but um, we like them too. But, 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 but one thing we talk about is that now obviously we're in this kind of weird reality right now that hopefully one day will will pass but one thing that i'm passionate about is that students need to understand that the college is the ultimate professional laboratory for them right now and there's so many and and whether it's sports or not maybe it's cause maybe it's community maybe it's uh charity maybe it's event maybe it's tutoring, maybe it's, uh, you know, university relations, guest relations, you know, alumni relations, but things that you look for, things that you encourage uh, these students, um, give them advice on, you know, because a lot of times when I'll say it, they'll go, wow, you know, I really had not thought about that. And they're getting a quality education in the classrooms, but they might not be being made aware of the things that are going to influence that outcome when they leave college, which the outcome is the, is the job, but sort of talk about your philosophy of, of, of how these students should be sort of looking for these opportunities. And like I said, I link it back to passion. I love sports and I love to write and while I wound up with the sports information, but there's, the, the, there's so many opportunities in a, in a, in a college campus to, to, to learn and build that resume. Right. Yes, there really are, and I um, have been working with the College of Communication and Information Sciences at the University of Alabama and have been amazed at what students have access to and how they have hands-on learning. So I, I would advise them to do several things. One is, first, look in your own college and look at what those opportunities are. Talk to your professors. The one word that you have to remember is networking, and that starts while you're in college. Uh Those professors should know your name when you leave so that when you call them and ask them for a reference or ask them for advice, they take that call and they remember you. So I would say the first thing is to look within your college. Secondly, I would encourage students to take internships or to create opportunities even if they're not paid internships. So, you know, go to an office, and I have taken a lot of students and brought them in and said, I'll give you two days. We're going to make a schedule for you, and you can meet with every single person in marketing. And by the end of that, you'll be able to say what you know about marketing, what you know about the various job roles, what you like and what you don't like. But also, they can put on their resume, while it wasn't a paid internship, that they did have outreach and spent two days shadowing at Regions Bank Marketing Department. So create opportunities like that for yourself. And I also think that working is important, even if it's not going to be in your field. Look, I worked at a fast food restaurant for the first two and a half years of college. And I learned a lot that helped me in the future. What did I learn? I learned how to take care of people, and some of them weren't always nice. So you you, you do have to learn those things. So I think it's important to show you have initiative, that you not only went to school, but that you held a job, even if it's only 10 hours a week, and even if it's not in your field that you look for community activities and that you look within your college to get involved. Well, you just, you just uh, took a page right out of our playbook because, you know, as I'm teaching these students about looking at themselves as a, as a personal brand or a brand, like, Mm -hmm. like when, when we say, Hey, if you worked at a fast food restaurant uh, or you worked at a coffee shop, uh, you're showing that you may be paying your way through school. You're showing initiative. You're showing drive. And then how you package that, don't just say, hey, I was, a say, for instance, a barista at Starbucks. You can say, hey, I was on the front line of consumer behavior serving dozens or hundreds of customers per day, uh, you know, while I was working my way through school. So there's a lot of there's a lot of words, wordsmithing. And because what we're teaching these students is that every every encounter with Michelle is a possible job audition. And so they're showing you what type of employee they would be by every interaction that they're having with you, because it's a brutal job market. Everybody wants to be 
uh, in our space. They think it's fun and sexy, and it is fun and sexy, but but there's a lot of hard work involved. And, and so uh, to your point, how they package themselves, how they present themselves, um, and how they present that brand as you has been, you know, brilliant in positioning, um, you know, the, the region's brand and, you know, all the way down the mnemonics and the bike and the color and, and, and all of that. But I want, I want to talk about another thing that, that I am very passionate about and very, I think is very important is I always encourage uh, our kids and our students and our listeners to seek mentors and to seek them now. We can talk about the importance of, 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 of mentors to you because uh, I still have great mentors in my life as well. Yeah, I, I do think it's important, and I, I encourage people to look at mentoring a few ways, or at least two. One is the formal mentorship, and if you're going to have a mentor, you own that. So as a mentee, understand that it is not the mentor's job to do the work for you. You That's ask them, and you're there to gain from them. So at a minimum, what are your three goals for that men mentorship? What do you want to learn? Some of them are as simple as, I want to come out of this with the best resume and I need your help with that. But you ought to have at least three objectives for that mentorship. I think that's important. But then there, I think, is another way to look at mentoring and that's informal. And I call it really observing. And you can look around you every day and see what's working and what is not working for people who you either work with or you go to school with or who you're taught by and look at what works and what doesn't work and look at how people respond because what you're doing is you're gaining information about how you want to behave and how you're going to act as a professional going forward and in a way the world is mentoring you by doing that but you have to be observant. You have to be a people observer, and that has to mean something to you. So I, I do think mentoring is very important. I encourage every student to have a mentor, not necessarily from their own college, but to have someone in business. And believe me, people are flattered to do it yep. if you're serious and if you come to them with objectives and if you come to them willing to work for improvement. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. We, we were all where they were at one time. And we all want to get back. But so when somebody reaches out, because I really love to hear from the great ones, LinkedIn, email, handwritten note, what, what, what gets your attention? Like, hey, this kid's got something. They got something special. I want to respond to them. I want to help them. I want to, I want to bring them into my network, my relationship. What's, what, what are some tips and tricks that stand out to you that successful intern, seeker, intern seekers, uh, mentees, job seekers uh, that have, have, have caught your attention, caught your eye? Yeah, I think that they have purpose in their communication. So they reach out and they know what they're asking for and they're willing to be flexible and they can communicate that. So I do think communication is important and purpose is important. You know, I want to have an internship. However, I realize that it's not always possible and would like to talk to you about what opportunities you think there are, if not an internship. Well, then I see a student who's already thought through the fact they may not get what they want, but they're willing to talk and see Bingo. what other options they have. Bingo. So I think that's really important. And I think for students, to take it seriously, take the business seriously, take the way you act seriously, take the way you integrate with people in that business and that you have a relationship with people very seriously. I have seen some individuals come in and they're quite casual and you haven't earned that yet. You know, there, there is no such thing as quite casual when you're learning and you're asking people to help you. So I would say be respectful and take it seriously because that's someone else's time and someone else's business that they're sharing with you. And, and I, I really do think that's important. I, I think having a sense of um, purpose in terms of goals 
and being able to talk through your ideas and things that you want to achieve in life is also always something that, as you said, we've all been there. So as a professional, when you hear that coming from a young person, it just ignites you again, and you, you're, you're excited right. to hear that. So be willing to share that. Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 I think that is, I love that. I love that term purpose. Um, you know, I always love for somebody to have been prepared uh, when they reach out to me. One of my biggest pet peeves in the planet is you'll get a student been to school four years, invested tens of thousands of money, time, hours, energy, resources, and they will send to my generic website, in, Info at Melt ATL. Hi, this is Joe Smith. The task is my resume and I need to make X amount of dollars. And you know what <laughs> I immediately do when I get that? And by the way, this happens a lot. You know, I know what you, you know do. What I, I flush it. I flush Delete. it. And yeah. I'm going, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, like, I'm like, you, you just flunked the audition. And I'm going... You've got to be, you got to be kidding me. And so we love to, you know, I loved it because first of all, and I'm dating myself, but I had to go to the library and use things like yellow pages and encyclopedias and resource guides to track people down. And then I had to actually write them a letter and these kids have it in the palm of their hand. They could you know everything about me or everything about you. And that's why we, you know, I, I, I love you talking about the purpose and the passion and the values. But with the first you sit in, where where do you see the um, where do you see future jobs within the financial services industry? Because your profession, um, just like every other profession, is undergoing seismic and immediate shifts and changes uh, right before our eyes. Yeah, I would say that it's important for students who are interested in marketing to understand that they must have knowledge of research and data and analytics and the role it plays in marketing. Marketing has evolved so much over the last 20 years, 30 years, and where it is today is in a very data-oriented very much a what can you contribute to the company measurable right. stand. So you have to be able to be comfortable with that. I'm not saying you have to be an analyst, you have to build models, but you need to be comfortable with that. You need to understand what's going on with the industry and you need to be comfortable with measuring everything you do as a marketer because that's how you prove your value to a company. And that's how you justify your budgets is when you can look and you can talk the language of who you work for, which I work for a bank and I talk money and I talk revenue and I talk what my ROI is and what my internal rate of return is for every dollar we spend. And it makes sense. So I think that's important. It's not about um, only the marketing piece, the end result that you see, the commercial that you see. It's about being able to link that commercial to results for the company. And oh, by the way, the amount of research that went into developing that commercial and the testing of right. that commercial, all very, very important. It's a well, science. Just, I do well, think it's much more say, of a could, science. You just hit on something because, because I, I always kind of have a fun, 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 fun formula for like every 30 seconds that somebody sees they go oh that's a fun commercial there may be hundreds or thousands of hours that went into the formulation of the strategy of the commercial and then the actual development of the commercial and then the actual production of the commercial and i think you just hit the nail on the head within that whole process there's a lot of professional opportunities wouldn't you say yes yes i would i agree and we we work on a number of levels and i mentioned research so consumer research, consumer testing, um, you mentioned production and development of the commercials themselves. We also uh, have um, strategy. So what is the overall campaign strategy? Things can't be done in a manner where they're not linked into one cohesive strategy. So we have strategists who understand that. Well, to understand that, you need to understand consumer behavior. 
You need to understand your goals. Well, how are you going to measure and what are your KPIs? Um, we have direct marketing specialists to understand response and how to measure and change constantly and test. So yes, there are many opportunities within the area of marketing and um, I would say that while it is still an art and is still great fun and there has never been a better time to be in marketing, I don't mm -hmm. think it is much more of a science now and you can prove your value to a company. Totally, totally agree. So as we wrap uh, this fascinating conversation and thank you so much, we, we love to we love to ask our guests, like, like, what are, and, and, and we, we tell them all about the industry periodicals and all those types of things, but, but what are some of the, what are some of the great go-tos, uh, recommended reading, recommended podcasts, recommended books that, uh, that they should be reading that have influenced uh, your growth and career and success that you would share with our, uh, with our students? Yeah, you know, the way I approach learning, and I don't know if you've ever done a, a strength finders test, but learning is one of my top five strengths. And the way I approach it is back to that passion and interest piece. Mm -hmm. So I would say read online everything you can get your hands on about current trends. There, there are podcasts like these, such as Marketing Trends, podcast that mm -hmm. have marketers from all over who talk about a number of subjects. So listen to them, listen to TED Talks, figure out what interests you and then Google it and go down that rabbit hole and learn and ask questions. I do think that intellectual curiosity cannot be, um, I cannot stress it enough that it's very important for students to have intellectual curiosity and to ask themselves questions and ask themselves what's important right now. Do they understand that third-party cookies are going away, that already they're 30 to 40% gone and they're going away completely? And how is that going to change business? And what are they going to read about that? And how are they going to figure out what that means to companies they're going to go work for? You know, do they understand what the latest trends are in terms of media consumption? If you're interested in advertising, ask yourself all those questions from the beginning to the end and start Googling those things and looking at marketing related sites, look at articles, uh, as you said, podcasts. You know, I, I really think it's an individual journey and that what makes it worthwhile is being able to take that passion and take that curiosity and combine it and Teach yourself every day. Teach yourself something. Every day, I read something online. Most of mine's online. Online articles, things like that, podcasts. When you travel, you know, listen to TED Talks. They're very interesting. And I actually, you know, I used a TED Talk about science and marketing to prove a point about change. So there, there are natural linkages out there, and I think that's important for students to have that intellectual curiosity and let it, let it, let it take them where it goes. Well, you, you, you mentioned the word curiosity, and, 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 and we hear that a lot from the great ones such as yourself. And I like to think that I'm, you know, intellectually curious, and, and I think I wear my staff out because I read so much, uh, but I'm, you know, really trying to, you know, you know, just like you, I mean, we've got to stay just a little bit of, you know, be a little bit ahead, a little bit ahead of the curve all the time. But uh, um, we look forward to seeing some of your uh, great SEC commercials now that we've got some SEC football playing and under uh, our belt. It was uh, it was fun, and actually, I think this round robin schedule is actually sort of fascinating. To uh, uh, you know, what Coach Saban wanted all along was for all the teams to be playing each other and I think it's uh, you know, in light of this in light of the pandemic but but uh, but this has been great today Michelle Elrod executive vice president head of marketing Regents bank uh, great uh, leader community leader education leader gives back University of Alabama uh, degree in advertising we really really do uh, appreciate your time and your words of wisdom uh, today and like I said we'll give uh, 
We'll let Paul Hodges have a high five because his Mississippi State Bulldogs prevailed over the LSU Tigers today. But that's pretty much all we'll give him. Um, uh, <laughs> we'll give, give him too much rope. But we really appreciate your time and your uh, inspiration and words of wisdom with our students at Virtual Mountain University. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. We, 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 will, we will share this with you and share it with others. And uh, we look forward to having you back on. But we thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah, call me anytime. Thank you. Thanks, Vince. Hope you enjoyed today's virtual class. We'll be back soon with another edition of Melt University 2020.